so let's start then. Good morning. Uh, my name is Luis Felipe. I'm a PhD student in the Laboratory of Electronic Structure of Materials, advised by Professor Rogério Bayerly. Today we'll talk about uh, graphene and silicine nanodomains in a ultra thin silicon carbide layer. This is part of a work we did last year and was published in the Journal of Hydrogen Energy. So, why silicon carbide? Well, silicon carbide is a wide band gap semiconductor. It has interesting physical properties like high conductivity, high uh, mechanical stability, low thermal expansion, and it's uh, chemically inert. Possible applications is the substitute of silicon devices, uh, energy generation, photocatalysis, and also like uh, hydrophobic surfaces. Also, silicon and carbon are abundant on the Earth's surface, so it probably is a cheap material to deal with. Besides the bulk, silicon carbide already have, have been grown as uh, nanowires, nanotubes, and also nanoribbons. So, uh, an ultra thin silicon carbide layer, that's an uh, H6, I will call it, it's a graphene like structure. So, it's a an uh, atomic layer of silicon carbide arranged in a uh, hexagonal uh, lattice. It's energetically stable and we don't have uh, negative frequencies, so if you look at the phonons, we are okay. So it possibly it can be uh, obtained experimentally. So why graphene and silicine nanodomains? Well, some uh, ternary structures such as uh, HB and C, it's uh, also a graphene like structure, present formation of graphene and uh, hexagonal bar nitride nanodomains. So, if the components of a ternary structure form these defects in the, when we grow the, the structure, so it's likely to have uh, silicon and carbon defects in the silicon carbide matrix, right? Also, you can Depending on the size and of and the the shape of these domains, you can have an insulator or a semiconductor. So you can make a range uh, inside it. So it's interesting because you can have a band gap control. So the idea of the the work is to study the influence of these domains in the silicon uh, carbide layers. To do this, we use ab initio calculations uh, within the functional theory, density functional theory framework, we call it DFT. In the DFT, we have a Schrodinger-like equation that's modified, and the main object is not anymore the wave function, but the electron density, which is can be measured and has physical meaning. We also use a supercell method when you're dealing with the uh, crystals, you can use normally the minimal cell to do the calculations. But when you have to deal with uh, the fact in the crystals, you need to use a large cell because you do, you want to avoid when you do the translation of the cells because you count as infinite with uh, block functions. You want to avoid that the interact uh, of your cell with next image. So, if you want to study the, the fact alone, you need to have a bigger cell to avoid this, or a smaller cell if you want to see how the, the facts interact with each other. Also, the equilibrium geometry, or the last, uh, the most stable structure, is obtained when you have forces smaller than 0.5 electronvolts per angstrom. We also use Grimm's potential, uh, semi empirical potential. That's used for Van der Waals interaction that's not described in DFT. So you have to add it. This is uh, implemented in Siesta code that we use uh, in the work. So here we have an example, uh, example uh, optimized structure of, uh, H6, of the H6, uh, H6 layer. As you can see, we used the 160 atom cell. And it really stays uh, flat. Calculating the 
band structure of the material in the left, going from the uh, first Brillo zone, we also see that one band is the character of the bulk silicon carbide, and it's a wide band gap semiconductor. As you can see in the in the right, we have uh, carbon uh, atoms mainly uh, forming your valence uh, band maximum and silicon forming your uh, conduction band minimum, which is the, the part uh, above Fermi energy, which is set as zero energy in both uh, graphics. We also, so this for, uh, we do the starting with pristine material, now we go for the domains. As you can see in the center of the cells, in the top images, we uh, change the atom by the other species. So you can see that forms in the in the left side, we have graphene on domain, and in the right side we have the silicene on domain. As you can see in the bottom, when we have a graphene on domain, the layer stays flat as we expected from graphene. But when we go to the silicene uh, nanodomain, the domain rises above the, the layer. And it is, its final structure, it's really uh, uh, resembles the silicene structure. That's not flat, but it's a corrugated structure. When we look at the band structure, what a graphene nanodomain, you can see now in the red and the, in the green boxes that we have new electronic uh, states inside the band gap now. And as we can see in the right, in the charges and surfaces, these new levels are from the, the nanodomain, are originated from the nanodomain, and they are really well uh, defined there. From the uh, silicene nanodomain, we have almost the same uh, behavior, but now we have more uh, electronic levels inside the band gap. If you look again in the, the right side, we have the, the charges, the surfaces, but this time, if you look at your uh, valent bands max, you can see that it's not a discrete level. It's more like a perturbation in the, the, in the band, different from the uh, graphene case. Uh, another thing we did was calculate the optical absorption because as we want to use uh, the silicon carbide layer for photocatalysis, we need to have strong absorption peaks in the visible region. That's it, uh, below three electron volts. Okay, two minutes. Thank you. As you can see, uh, the left side that's uh, figure A, it's the pristine system. So you have uh, black lines and red lines, means that when it's black, you have a uh, incident photon with a polarization per uh, parallel to the plane of the layer. And when it's red, you have the polarization uh, perpendicular to the layer. As you can see, we only have uh, a strong peak absorption for parallel polarization for the pristine system, which is without effects. For the graphene nanodomain, which is the center image, you can see that we have more pronounced peaks and uh, peaks, new peaks in uh, smaller energies, which is something we want, because we want things to be below three or four electron volts to use in visible range. That's the, more or less the limit of the visible range of the spectrum. For the silicon nanodomain, that's the rightmost uh, figure, we have also peaks below uh, 3 electron volts, and differently from the other two systems, we have now peaks, small ones of course, but we have now peaks for the perpendicular polarization. This is why the silicon nanodomain, it's uh, outside the plane, so you have uh, now sp3 hybridization and not anymore only uh, bonds in the plane. We also did molecule absorption, like uh, hydrogen and oxygen molecules, over the top of the, the non-domains, as you can see in the figure. We chose two geometries, 
parallel to the plane and perpendicular to the plane. And as a result, we can see here, uh, the most important is the third column, it's the adsorption energies. As we can see, the nanodomains uh, increase the value of the adsorption energies. Let's go fast. Uh, inside of the, the parentheses, we have uh, the energies without Van der Waals interaction, and outside the parentheses, we have the energies with Van der Waals interaction. So we see we need to use uh, the Van der Waals because it's most of the interaction. And we can see also that the range that's uh, 0.2 to 0.4, it's the range optimal for you uh, store hydrogen in materials. So we see that in this system we have a really good uh, energy uh, adsorption, and this system is likely to uh, be a good uh, hydrogen storage medium. As conclusions, nanodomains introduce uh, new electronic levels inside the gap, lowering the gap, so you can tune it. These levels give rise to new absorption peaks in the visible spectrum. That's also what we want. We also know from the FT that the band gap is uh, underestimated by around 30%, so we expect that peaks shift more or less 1 EV to the right, so it will increase. Also, the nanodomains make uh, our in the, the absorption of hydrogen molecule is in the near optimal region for, in, for hydrogen storage in the nanodomains. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, preguntas.